So, uh, first of all, uh, great to be part of this event. Ignite, unleash the power within you. Uh, so, what I thought is to let's discuss on something which is more closer to you than more. I mean, let's say talk about AMC uh, funds or schemes. So, I we, we I I think we have some 250, 300 people in this room, and the topic which I have chosen is basically growth hacks. You know. Uh, growth hacks if you look at uh, what you basically how many of you have heard of growth hacking can you by raise of hands you can tell me how many have heard of this word growth hacking so not much right uh, I also thought let's talk about something which you haven't you know heard much before so basically uh, like I, I mentioned here who would like to accelerate the growth of their business you know uh, we all are in the business of mutual funds. Uh, some of you are, would be selling the alternate products also. And all of us would like to ensure that a business grow at a pace uh, which is significant over a number of years. And you are beneficiaries of it. So all our entrepreneurs, all are uh, in the business for serious work. And you guys are very, very serious about the growth of your businesses also. Right? So. If you look at Sean Ellis, uh, what he says that a growth hacker is a person who whose two north is growth, right? So all of you in this room, there are two mindset, right? One is a growth mindset, and other is a traditional mindset. So if you look it back, and uh, let's say, you know, 20 years back when I started my journey in this industry, mutual funds, uh, we used to fax a transaction. No, uh, even pen was not needed. And some of you would have started even before me. So even things were all very, very different then point of time. However, over the period, things have changed. The traditional mindset of doing a business cannot remain so. You have to make sure you have to put your efforts to get what is, you know, things which are available today. You need to have a growth mindset. And you cannot keep on doing the business in a traditional way. Okay, and all of you in this room today are primarily MFDs. And for MFDs, you know, which parameter is the barometer for growth? Sorry? AUM, perfect. Absolutely perfect, you know. Assets under management, AUM. Now, all of you are, for you, the biggest growth has to be in the AUM. So, like you mentioned, AUM. So, how can we achieve this path? Okay, so. I have chosen certain points to discuss with you today, uh, which I found very, very relevant. So first, product offering, okay? Second is the forward, look, I mean forward view. Third is the advice differentiation. Fourth is customer centricity. Fifth, risk management. And the last one is technology. So these are the primarily core, which I thought I'd share with all of you. So, you know, if you see movies today, how many of you go to multiplex and how many of you go to single screen? Anybody going to single screen now? Multiplex, how many of you see multiplex movies? I think everybody sees on multiplex, why? Because in a single place like a PVR, Inox or whichever you know, multiplex you are going to, you have ample choices, right? So right now, so you as a MFD, as a you know, financial uh, planner, you cannot have only one product. You have to be multi-product. Okay? Uh, for example, you know, I have mentioned three points here on risk mitigation, capital preservation, and wealth creation. Now, on risk mitigation, you should offer a life or a health. If not, you are already offering. So as a MFD, you should, should have all the products in your kitty. For, for example, wealth creation. I know a lot of people will say, no, we don't do alternates. We do only mutual fund. Question is why? A bank, RM, does everything. So why not you? Okay, so you need to be open to it. Just like an asset management company will have, you know, different products. You choose which product is good for your client. Similarly, a client has to choose what is good for him. And you have to offer those products. Right? Similar on the capital preservation, you should offer all the products to the client. Now, this is the first hacking, that is your transformation from a MFD to financial product distributor. You should restrict yourself to be a MFD and more look from a 
point of view of a financial product distributor, which I believe is very, very critical for all the people sitting in the room this point of time. Second is that when I, you know, I do meetings across the country, I interact with people, and the first question comes, sir, performance care, what is the performance? Right? But when we drive the car, do we look upfront or, you know, forward or do we look backward? Right? This, you know why this, these, the screen, windscreen on the front is so large? Because if you are not conscious of what is in front of you, you will meet with an accident. Similarly, in an investment also, you have to look at in terms of what is there in front of you today, whether it's portfolio, valuation, you know, you, have to, you cannot look at past, okay, this is what did well in past, and so that's why I'm only going to recommend this. You have to be forward looking. You know, this is the data on the asset allocation, and if you see asset wise, you know, every year there would be a new player winner. Each asset class cannot remain the best performing every year. Similarly, if you look at the even countries, in 2010 decade, India was the best, best performing market in the world. Last decade, India was one of the worst. So a lot of people said, let's invest in US only. 2021, we got the maximum flows in a NASDAQ fund. And I was telling our partners, sir, please hold on. Valuations are aggressive. Don't just blindly put the money because the last five years, CAGR is 25, 28, 30% CAGR. You know, don't do this. So what holds true for a country, what holds true for an asset class, also holds true for a scheme. So this is the last 10 year data. I need to update this slide. But basically, if you see the top 10 funds in any three years, actually does not remain all, always in the top 10. So point being, stop looking backwards, start looking forward. If you're applying this formula, maybe you're not doing a justice to your client. So second trend hack which I talked about is basically, don't follow trends identify the trends what will work in next three years what will work in next five years what is happening in economy is the indian manufacturing sector going to do better in next five years than the past five years or the infra not did so well in the last decade will it do well in this decade and and decide you it's up to you so point being you should not follow trend but identify trends early and you know client be the beneficiary third it's a good picture. You know, there are a lot of sheep in, uh, in this picture. Basically, don't follow herd mentality. Just because somebody is selling IT fund, not everybody should be selling IT fund. Not because one is selling technology, I mean, which, whichever fund you want to take, you know. That should not be the logic. Everybody was selling international fund in 2021. Why? Because everybody was buying. And uh, anybody, and if you ask someone, why are you selling it? You know, because, you know, good returns are there. So this is herd mentality. Stop being part of herd mentality. As a MFD, you cannot afford it. You are not adding value to a client. If you are adding value to a client, then it makes sense. But if you're not adding value, then it doesn't make sense. So please do not be a part of herd mentality. So third is growth mindset for a differentiated advice. Okay? Build your credibility. If you're going to advise only on the past, then not going to build credibility in front of the, your clients. Do you agree or not? Can I hear all of you? Yes or no? Thank you so much. Okay, fourth. I think this is very critical. Uh, customer experience. At times I have seen a lot of focus on the product and less focus on the needs and the requirement of the client. I think customer focus experience is the most important thing which all our MFDs should keep in mind. You know, right from advice to support to mind to quality to competence. I met a partner who is some 500 crore AUM. He has not employed anybody. He managed everything on his own. How long one can continue like that? How can you be productive? How will you be able to 2x your AUM, if you're not going to invest in your own business, because investing in the business also means having, giving a better experience to the client, right? So 
all these things you know i'm sure all of you are doing it i'm not taking it away but i i believe that if not make sure that your focus is high on the customer centricity i think this is the point i was trying to make is that a lot of time the discussions on the product in terms of design feature capability rather than customer need want expectation right for example i was talking to a a friend a uh, partner yesterday and he said whether your map fund has a equity taxation or not i said no but then it doesn't make sense well, why no no equity taxation is better does multi asset fund needs to be relevant only if there is a equity taxation i i mean somebody a client want let's say a 8 9% kind of conservative multi multi asset fund why needs to be a equity taxation equity taxation therefore equity products is there but just because is not have equity taxation should somebody only i mean somebody should be selling only multi asset fund which are equity taxation and which i know lot of people do because equity taxation is what they want does it fulfill your clients need maybe not because balance and advantage fund is different role to play multi asset fund is different role to play so how many you are giving looking that direction if not please look at okay last point i think risk optimization risk mitigation most of the time our discussion is on return optimization i have ha very rarely i mean some of the partners do actually but very uh, very few partners discuss more on risk mitigation than the return optimization more discussion on that i think we need to be more conscious of risk optimize uh, risk mitigation than the return optimization and the next slide is basically just talk on this hacking is basically happy customer is a returning customer you can grow your aum from a happy customer multiple times so his need his wants are far more superior than the return optimization or the product suitability okay client suitability to product is more important you know uh, warren buffet said risk comes from not knowing what you are doing okay and uh, at times we have seen products are being sold without understanding the product very well deep in terms of what the product is doing so i am saying this is very very critical that you should know what product is being uh, being being offered to a client for and that is what we are saying management of risk not the management of returns okay so your customer strategy of one client may not fit all right you should know you do your client kyc you do you do paper kyc of client have you done the client excel kyc his needs his requirement i am sure some of you are doing but are is everyone doing that is everyone conscious that one product map does not be a same map may be suitable to other clients okay so management of risk is way important than the management of the return side and at this point of time not all are following this very very important hack and this is very and the growth hacking if you go and what i'm talking about today is basically a uh, this term was coined in 1919 by shawn ellis it is there for now 100 years more than 100 years and he talks about the entrepreneur zeal of growing the business at a x rate if you look at the digital transaction very sad to see but only 65% of the mfd transaction are basically digital Versus a 93 percent, this is happening on the overall for mutual funds AMC industry. There is still a reluctance of lot of partners to move their you know all transactions or you know uh, uh, non-financial financial transactions on the uh, paper-free way. I think this is something COVID has taught us a lot that digital is the very simplest way, error-free way. Uh, we should look at. moving our business completely to online be more productive lot of things can happen by click of a button error free and we believe that this is and today the the whole infrastructure provided by the amcs by rtas by you know uh, mf a lot of options are there for each and every partner you can choose what fits you you may not choose only offer to you choose what fits you but the key is that you have to go digital don't have a traditional mindset you need to have a growth mindset that's very critical and last but not the least is what i was telling you is the growth you have to adopt digital medium to reach out to a client if you look at the you know fintech companies today 
and fintech companies are adding lack of lack of clients. Do you know why? Because of the ease of the transaction, because of the convenience. You, how many of you use Swiggy and Zomato in this room? Nobody use in the back? So everybody uses, right? Swiggy and Zomato, why? It's convenient. So what is convenient to you is also convenient for your client. So I think very, very important that, you know, we should take the trend, adopt it faster, diesel, and make sure, you know, our clients are beneficial of that. You know, this is what I had to talk with you. In last five minutes, I'll talk about, uh, you know, about Mutila Uswal AMC. Uh, the AMC is starting in 2013. We are a 55,000 crore AMC. Uh, we are primarily an equity AMC. All our funds minus the liquid and ultra are all equity. Uh, we are, you know, almost 20% of assets are, uh, you know, invested by group companies. Uh, so, skin the game is very, very high. Uh, we are present in mutual fund PMS and AIFs. Uh, over the last two years, a lot of changes happened in the AMC uh, in terms of the uh, our addition to risk fame, etc. And happy to share that almost 85% of our assets today are basically in top quartile. Okay, at times perceptions uh, could be different, but the fact is that Mozal Usal AMC has come by very strongly. My uh, request to all of you is to look at that. We have a presence in Kochi. Uh, Jason is there, uh, and we are also going to open an uh, office here in Tremendum very, very soon. So thank you for your time. Really appreciate. Thank you.